Hi friends, let's say you're standing near a tall building and you want to measure its height. Let's say you're in front of Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. So how do you measure its height? Or let's say you're standing on a bridge across a river. How do you measure the width of the river? To measure the height of a tall building, we'll have to go to the top and drop a long rope and measure the length of the rope. So it's not convenient, right? Measuring the width of the river is even harder because you have to stand on opposite banks with a long rope. So it's not practical. But if you know trigonometry, then it's really easy. In this video, we'll learn how to apply trigonometry to measure heights and distances. I'm going to make the concepts really easy for you. And after you watch this video, try the quiz and the top three questions on this topic. Links are given below the video. Before we look at the applications of trigonometry, first let's quickly revise the basics of trigonometry. So as you can see, for a right angle triangle, where the right angle is really important in trigonometry because we can define these ratios only when you have a right angle triangle. So we defined the basic ratios sine theta, cos theta, tan theta as perpendicular by hypotenuse, base by hypotenuse and perpendicular by base. And then here we have their reciprocals, cosec theta, sec theta and cot theta. Let's see how we can use these trigonometrical ratios to find heights and distances without actually measuring them. So let's dive right into it. Let's say we are standing in front of Burj Khalifa or any other building. Let's mark the building as A, B. Now we are going to observe the top of the building A from a point of observation on the ground O. So O is the point of observation. Now if you join O A, then this line is called the line of sight. Because we are looking at the top of the building A from the point O. Now through O, draw a horizontal line O B. So you are basically joining the point of observation O to the base of the building B. Now what is the angle between lines AB and OB? That's right. As you can see, angle B is 90 degree. Why? Because the building is standing vertically. So the angle it makes with the ground is 90 degrees. But let's say instead of Burj Khalifa, this was the leading tower of Pisa. Would angle B be still 90 degree? No, we can apply this only for the buildings that are standing straight. Now, the angle here, this angle is called angle theta, the angle of elevation. So that's the angle between line OA and line OB. So theta is the angle of elevation here. Now we can measure this angle using a surveying instrument. So we measured this angle and let's say angle theta was 60 degree. Okay. And let's say we measured the distance from O to the base of the building B using a measuring tape. And the distance was 480 meters. So let's see how we can apply trigonometry to find the height of Burj Khalifa without going to the top of the building. To solve any question on heights and distances, the first important thing is to draw a nice diagram. So for our question where we wanted to find the height of the Burj Khalifa building, I've drawn a diagram here. So here our building is AB. And remember we were given O was the point of observation, which is 480 meters from the base of the building B. Okay, so you should draw this line OB and mark the distance there. And this angle of elevation, since you're looking up from the point of observation O, to the top of the building. So this angle here was given to us as 60 degree. And so what is our right angle triangle here? A, B, O. And why is angle B 90 degree? Because remember, the building is standing perpendicular to the ground, right? So that's our 90 degree here. Because we need a right angle triangle to use our trigonometrical ratios. So now let's mark what do we need to find in the diagram. So we need to find the height of the building AB. So let's label that as X, since that's our unknown. 
okay and now to solve for x the simple trick is take the ratio of what is not known to you so what is unknown and what is given right so let's take this so what's that ratio going to be it's going to be a b so the side a b by the side o b right and so we have the ratio x by 480 meters here right so let me mark that up here so what we don't know by what is given now this ratio of this sides you need to find out what trigonometrical ratio are you using so to identify that let's take a look here in this triangle AOB can you see that the side AB is the perpendicular right so it's the perpendicular in this triangle so I'm going to mark it with P and what is OB over here that's right it's the base of the triangle so let's label that with B so we are basically looking at x by 480 which is basically the perpendicular by the base of this right angle triangle so which trigonometrical ratio are we talking about that's right it's going to be tan theta right and what is our theta over here can you see the angle theta here is 60 degree so I'm going to write tan of 60 correct so now basically once we solve this uh, we can easily get x so let's go ahead and do that and so do you know what is the value of tan 60 that's right it's going to be root 3 so you need to learn up these values so we have x by 480 is equal to root 3 so let me copy that down here so therefore x is going to be 480 into root 3 meters and if you solve that you're going to get uh, oh actually so let's substitute the value so 480 into 1.732 so that's the value of root 3 and if you multiply these numbers x is going to be 831 point three six meters so that's the height of our building right so it's really simple as you can see what we did here you just look for what you don't know and what's given you take that trigonometrical ratio and then you need to identify what ratio is it so for us it was perpendicular by base so we are working basically with tan theta so that's tan 60 and you substitute the values and once you solve for it, you can easily get the height of the building. So the height of Burj Khalifa is 831.36 meters according to our question. Now let's take a look at this question. So we have the shadow of a 10 meter long pole is 10 root 3 meter. Find the angular elevation of the sun. So the first important thing to do is visualize the question by drawing a diagram. So let's draw a diagram here. We have a 10 meter long pole. So let me draw a pole here. Okay. So that's our pole here. And let's mark it as A, B. And we've been given it's 10 meter long. Okay. And let's say the sun is here. Okay. So I'm going to draw the sun right here. So that's our shining sun. And so where will the shadow form? So you can see the shadow of the pole will be on this side because the sun is on this side. So the shadow of this pole is going to be right here. Okay. So let's call the shadow as BC. Now let's join the line CA. And we can extend that right up to the sun, right? So basically this line is going to the sun. And is this a right angle triangle? That's right, it is because the pole is at 90 degree to the ground. So the shadow is formed on the ground here. And what have we been asked? Find the angular elevation of the sun. So basically the angle of elevation. 
So let's mark that in the diagram here. So if you're observing from point C, right, this will be the angle of elevation from the sun, which is marked as theta in the diagram. And that's what we need to find. And one more thing I forgot to write down, we've been given the length of the shadow. So let's put that down here in our diagram. It's 10 root 3 meters. Okay. And remember, again, we should take a, a ratio of two sides in this triangle. So which two sides should we consider here? The ones we've been given. So 10 meter and 10 root 3 meter. And we need to find the angle which is given as theta. Okay. So now let's take a look. So we are interested in the ratio AB, 10 meter and BC, right? So first let's identify that what are these sides in this triangle? So AB, can you tell me what is that? That's right. AB is the perpendicular of this triangle. So let's mark it with the letter P. And as you can see, BC is the base of the triangle because it has the 90 and theta angle. So I'm going to label that as the base B. So the trigonometrical ratio AB by BC is basically perpendicular by the base of this triangle, right? This right angle triangle. And what is perpendicular by base? That's right. It's tan theta. So let's write that down. It's perpendicular by base is tan of this angle, tan theta. Now let's substitute the values and let's see if we can find out theta. So we have tan theta is equal to the perpendicular, which is 10 meters by the base, which is 10 root 3 meters, right? So this 10 cancels out and we have basically tan theta is equal to, let me write that here, it's equal to 1 by root 3. So tan theta is 1 by root 3. And so you know the value of, what value of theta should give uh, tan as 1 by root 3? That's right. Theta is equal to 30 degrees. So with this, we found the angular elevation of the sun. The angular elevation of the sun, the angle is 30 degrees. That's our answer. Now let's discuss about the angle of depression. Let's say I'm standing on top of a building, A, B here. So I'm at the top, at point A here, and I'm looking down at a person standing at point O. So here A is the point of observation and O is the object. Now if we join A, O, then this is the line of sight for us. And just like in the case of elevation, we drew a horizontal line so we are going to draw a horizontal line here, AX. And the angle that AX makes with AO is called the angle theta. And theta here is our angle of depression. It's called the angle of depression because we are looking down. For angle of elevation, remember, we were looking up. But here, this is an angle of depression because we are looking down at a person at point O. To complete a triangle, through O, we'll draw a line BO parallel to AX. Now can you see, we have a triangle AOB over here. Now let's look at the angles. Angle AOB equals angle XAO. So angle AOB is also theta by interior alternate angles. And if you look at our triangle ABO, what is angle B? Angle B is 90 degrees. Now, why is angle B 90 degree? Because the building is standing perpendicular to the ground. As you can see, we have our right angle triangle here, ABO, where angle B is 90 degree and angle O is theta. So now we can apply trigonometrical ratios to this right angle triangle and easily solve any question. Now let's take a look at this question on angle of depression. So let's see what it says. From a point on a bridge across a river, the angles of depression of the banks on opposite sides of the river 
are 30 and 45. If the bridge is at a height of 10 meter from the banks, we need to find the width of the river. Okay, so that's our question. Now remember, what's the first important thing to do? Draw a diagram. So we have to visualize this question first. So let's say this is our river here. A, B, right? So the, those are the two ends of the river, the bank, the banks of the river. Okay. And we are observing this, let's say from a point P, which is on a bridge. So let's say this bridge runs over the river and let's mark it as C, D. And as the question says, we are looking at the two banks of the two ends of the river, right? So the two banks. So I'm going to join those lines here. So PA and PB, right? And what does it say? The angles of depression are 30 and 45. So let's mark that here. So when you're looking from point A to point A, uh, sorry, point P to point A, right? That's an angle of depression. So let's, let me label that as 30 degree here. Okay, and this angle is given to us as 45 degree, the angle for the other bank, right? So those are the two angles of depression of the two sides of the river. So this is our river here. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find the width of the river. So there's this length, AB, right? Now let's see what we can do here. So one thing you can do is, Let's drop a perpendicular from P on line AB and let me mark that as PM. So this angle is 90 degree. Okay. And now we can use uh, the inter interior alternate angles. And since this angle of depression is 30 degree, so this angle is also going to be 30 degree, right? Because they are interior alternate angles. So this angle here is also going to be 30 degree. And similarly, this angle of depression, because you're looking down at point B from P is 45. So again, using interior alternate angles, this angle is also going to be 45 degrees here. Right? So we've marked the important things here. Now, what are we interested in? We want to find the width of the river. So let's mark that as x. So this length x, so that's am and the length mb, right? y. So we are interested in total. The river's length is x plus y here. And again in trigonometry, you need to look out for the right angle triangles. So what are the right angle triangles here? We actually have two of them. So one is going to be apm, that's the 90 degree angle. And this one is also a right angle triangle because if this is 90 degree, then the triangle PMB is also a right angle triangle. So again, we need to find these sides of the right angle triangle. So this one X here and this one Y. Okay. And what have we also been given in the question that the height of the bridge is 10 meter. Okay. So this height PM. The perpendicular that we dropped is 10 meter. So let me mark that here also in the diagram. So this is 10 meter for us, right? So now let's break the question and first solve for x and solve for y and then we'll easily get the width of the river. It's going to be x plus y. So let's start with the first triangle APM. So carefully follow me here. We are looking at this triangle because our diagram is quite messy. There are a lot of things here. So if you're looking at this triangle here, this is 90 degree, this is 30. And so like remember, we need to look at the ratio of the sides that we know and we want to find. So it's going to be, we are going to take the ratio of, let's take it as 10 by x, right? So that's the ratio I've taken. And can you see that 10 by X is basically your PM by AM. 
right? And what is PM by AM? Can you see that in this triangle, PM is the perpendicular of the triangle and AM is the base of the triangle. So we know that this is going to be tan of 30 degree, right? Tan theta because it's perpendicular by base. So 10 by x is going to be tan of 30 and what is tan of 30 remember it's going to be 1 by root 3. So x is basically if you cross multiply x is going to be 10 root 3 meters. So we found x now we need to find y okay. So let's solve for y now here. So that's uh, pretty simple. Now to solve for y we're going to look at triangle PMB right and so we know 10 meters and the unknown is MB y. So let's take a ratio of PM by MB and that's going to be 10 meter by y and again what is this ratio going to be because it's the perpendicular pm is the perpendicular by the base mb so it's going to be tan theta right and what is theta here for this triangle it's 45 degree so it's pretty simple it's going to be tan of 45 and what is tan of 45 correct it's 1 so basically y is going to be if you solve this y is going to be 10 meters because tan of 45 was equal to 1 right. So now finding the width of the river is really simple because we just need to add up x and y. So let's go ahead and do that. So the width of our river so the width is going to be x plus y and let's use the values here. So x is 10 root 3 meter plus y which is 10 and we can take 10 common here. So we have root 3 plus 1 okay and substitute the value of root 3. So that's going to be 10 1.732 plus 1 right. So that's 10 into 2.732. So how much is the width? It's 27.32 meters. So that's our final answer. We found the width of the river using this trigonometrical ratios here. Okay, are you ready for this question now? Observed from the top of a 75 meter high lighthouse, the angles of depression of two ships are 30 and 45 degree. If one ship is exactly behind the other on the same side of the lighthouse, find the distance between the ships. Again, remember first thing is to draw a diagram. So I have gone ahead and drawn a diagram for this question here. So here AB is the lighthouse which is 75 meter high and since it stands perpendicular to the ground, right? So we've got our 90 degree angle here and then we've been given the two angle of depressions which are 30 and 45 of two ships. So the ships are the points C and D and we are observing them from the top of the lighthouse. So you're looking down. So these are angles of depression, not angles of elevation, right? Angles of depression and the ship C has an angle of depression 30 degree and the ship D has an angle of depression 45 degree as shown here. Okay. And we need to find the distance between the ships. Okay. So first let's see what do we have here. So we are going to look for right angle triangles right and let's mark what are the angles that we know. So we know that this is 30 degree so this angle is going to be interior alternate angles. So this angle is also going to be 30 degree right and since this angle XBC sorry XBD is 45 so this angle is also going to be 45 again by interior opposite angles. So we have these two angles right and let's mark these distances. So the distance between C and D we don't know so I'm going to label that as X 
and this one as Y between D and A. Okay. So now since we don't know both these distances, right? So we have two unknowns, X and Y, two variables. So to solve them, we need two equations. So we need to consider two right angle triangles here. So which ones should we take? One right angle triangle can be BDA. Okay, so this right angle triangle with the 90 degree and a 45 degree angle here. And the other right angle triangle, can you see another one formed here? BAC. So this triangle with the 90 here and the 30 degree angle here. Okay, so again, we look at those right angle triangle, take the ratio of the sides, right? What is given and what we want to find and let's put those equations down. So let's start with triangle ABD, this triangle, right? So I'm talking about this one here. So in triangle ABD, we are going to take AB by AD, right? So that's going to be 75 by Y. And can you see that is the perpendicular by the base? So what is it going to be? tan theta, correct. So that's going to be tan of 45 degree, right? So that's uh, tan 45 and that's going to be, if you solve that, that's 1, so 75 by y, right? And we have y as cross multiply 75 meters, right? And what is our other triangle that we're going to look at? Let's look at the other triangle. I can call it ABC, right? So this triangle, okay? So we're going to look at triangle ABC. And there again, we'll take uh, the ratio of these two sides, right? Because what we know and what we don't know. So it's going to be AB by AC. And that's going to be 75 by x plus y and that's going to be tan of 30 degree, right? And what is tan of 30 degree? Okay, it's simple. It's 1 by root 3. So here we have our equation. So this is equal to 1 by root 3, right? So if we solve for that, we'll have you cross multiply, you have x plus y equals 75 root 3. So this is our one equation here. So we have one equation here. And this is our second equation here. Right? So we can use these two equations to solve. And it's pretty simple because we can just substitute the value of y in here. So we have x plus 75 equals 75 root 3. So what is x going to be? 75 into root 3 minus 1, right? And root 3, remember the value, 1.732. So you should learn up that value. And if you do minus 1 of that, it's going to be 75 into multiplied by uh, 0.732. So what is x going to work out to be? So if you multiply those numbers, we get 54.90 meters. So that is the value of x. And that's exactly what we wanted to find because remember, we wanted to find the distance between the ships. So the ships were C and D. We wanted to solve for x and that's how we've got the value. It's 54.9 meters. That's our answer. Now let's solve this question. A statue 1.2 meters tall stands on top of a pedestal. From a point on the ground, the angle of elevation of the top of the statue is 60 degree. And from the same point, the angle of elevation of the top of the pedestal is 45 degree. Find the height of the pedestal. Again, in trigonometry, the important thing is to draw a diagram. And I've drawn a diagram here. So let's take a look at what we have here. So our statue is BC. 
okay and that's of a height 1.2 meter which you can see is marked on the diagram and it's standing on this pedestal AB okay which is standing on the which is on the ground and now from this point we have two angle of elevation so the point of observation is O so you can see the top of the statue has an angle of elevation of 60 degree here and the top of the pedestal so the point B has an angle of elevation of 45 degree and what do we need to find the height of the pedestal okay so let's take a look at our uh, right angle triangles here so what do we have here can you see that we have one right angle triangle OAB here right so that's the 90 degree and it has an angle theta 45 and the other right angle triangle is OAC okay and we need to find the height of the pedestal so let me mark that as H and this distance is also not known so let's put an X over there for it so once again we're going to look at the two right angle triangles and see uh, the trigonometrical ratios and let's see what we can get from that so why are we considering two triangles here it's important because we have two unknowns right so let's see what do we get here so if we take this triangle OAB the inner one so triangle OAB right so taking that I'm going to take the ratio of these two sides AB by OA because we're interested in these two H and X so that's going to be the ratio H by X and that's perpendicular by the base so what is the trigonometrical ratio that's right it's going to be tan theta and the angle is 45 so that's going to be tan of 45 degree okay and what is tan 45 it's 1 so basically from here we get h is equal to x so that's our first equation now let's look at the second triangle oac the outer one so in the triangle O A C we are going to take this ratio so C A or A C by O A and what's that going to be it's going to be H plus 1.2 that's A C divided by O A is given to us as X am I right yeah and that's going to be tan of theta right because we are taking perpendicular by base here so that's going to be tan of 60 degree and what is tan of 60 it's root 3 so we have h plus 1.2 is equal to root 3 into x that's our second equation so we have two equations right and let's see how we can solve them actually we don't need to do simultaneous equations we can simply substitute the value of x as h because it's pretty simple here and we're interested in finding remember the height of the pedestrian so that's h so let's go ahead and substitute it here so we are going to get so this is going to work out to be h plus 1.2 equals root 3 times h right okay and so if you bring this this side so we have 1.2 equals h into root 3 minus 1 right so h is basically going to be 1.2 by root 3 minus 1 now there's an important trick here because can you see that the denominator is an irrational number so if you're going to substitute root 3 as 1.732 here and calculate the calculation is going to be lengthy so what should you do that's right rationalize the denominator so we are going to smartly multiply this whole thing by root 3 plus 1 to rationalize the denominator and so we'll have to do the same in the numerator also right and let's work it over here and see what's what are we going to get 
So H is going to be, let me draw a line here. So H is going to be 1.2, right? And into root 3 plus 1. And this we can easily do. We have A plus B into A minus B. So that's going to be root 3 square minus 1. So that's basically a 2. So we quickly rationalize the denominator. And we have over here 0 0.6 into root 3 plus 1. Now you can substitute the value of 1.732. So it's going to be 0 0.6 into 1.732 plus 1, so that's 2.732. And if you multiply this, we're going to get the height H as 1.64 meter. Okay, so the height of our pedestrian, that's what we wanted to find. AB has worked out to be H is equal to 1.64 meter. That's our answer here. Now let's look at this question. A man standing on the deck of a ship, which is 10 meter above the water level, observes the angle of elevation of the top of a hill is 60 degree. And the angle of depression of the base of the hill is 30 degree. Find the distance of the hill from the ship and the height of the hill. Again, draw a diagram. So I've drawn a basic diagram here where this is the deck of the ship and the man is standing at B and he's, the deck of the ship is 10 meter above the water level. So this is the water level and he's 10 meters above it. And this CD is our hill. Okay, so now let's take a look at the angles here. So when he's observing the top of the hill, so that's the point of observation is B and he's looking at D, the angle of elevation is 60 degree. So let's see how do we mark that in our diagram. So to mark the angle of elevation, we need to drop a perpendicular here, okay? So from B to CD, and let me mark the perpendicular as BE, and this angle of elevation is given to us as 60 degree, right? He's looking up at the top of the hill. And now the angle of depression, so when he's observing from B, the angle of depression because he's looking at the base of the hill. So it's going to be this angle, so let's draw a line of sight here. So we'll join B and C and this angle is given to us as 30 degree. Okay. So and that's our 90 degree here. And this is also 90 because the ship, uh, the ship and the water level make a 90 degree angle here. And so does the hill. Okay. Because angle C is going to be 90. The angle the hill makes with the water level here, right? And let's see what do we need to find? The distance of the hill from the ship and the height of the hill, okay? So let's mark this distance as x, okay? And let's say the height of the hill, so this entire height is h, okay? But we know that, can you see the rectangle here? So we know this is 10 meters since ab is 10, this one is given to us as 10 and this is going to be h minus 10, right? Does that make sense? h minus 10. So the length de is going to be h minus 10 here. Okay, now again we need to carefully look at our right angle triangles and apply our trigonometrical ratios. So let's see which one should we see. So if we are looking at triangle ABC here, that's a right angle triangle having 10 and x but I just have 90 degree, but we can easily find this angle because if this is 30, as you can see, these two lines are parallel, AC and BE, right? So by interior alternate angles, this is also going to be 30 degree, okay? So let's consider our triangle ABC, right? And we are going to take the ratio of AB by AC. So that's going to be 10 by x and as you can see it's perpendicular by base, right? So that's going to be tan of the angle, right? So that's tan theta, so that's tan 30 degree. And what is tan 30? 1 by root 3. So let's substitute that here. 
right? And if you solve uh, for x, we get x equals 10 root 3, right? Now let's see if we can find the height of the hill. So this is our distance of the ship from the hill, okay? And so since we need a numerical answer, we shouldn't leave it as 10 root 3. So if we multiply that out, that's going to be 10 into 1.732 meters. So that's 17.32 meters. So we found our x here. Now let's see to find the height of the hill, which triangle should we consider? So let's take a look at this triangle BDE, right? So let's consider triangle BDE here. And again, we'll do the trigonometrical ratio of DE by BE. Okay, so let's say if I take that ratio, what is it going to be? DE is H minus 10 by BE. And can you see B is equal to AC? It's a rectangle here, right? So it's going to be, this is going to be X. So I'm going to substitute that here. And that's going to be, it's again a perpendicular by a base. So it's tan theta. So it's tan of 60. Right? And so what do we get here? Uh, we are going to get H minus 10 by X. And what is tan of 60? That's right, it's root 3. Okay, so h minus 10 equals root 3 times x. Okay, and what value of x should I use here? So since we have a root 3 in here, don't go for the final decimal value. Let's use this value, 10 root 3. Because you should always substitute these values because in case they cash, cancel out, right? Uh, in case the root 3 disappears. So if we have, if we multiply this, we are going to get 30. And so h is going to be 30 plus 10, which is equal to 40 meters. So if you solve that, it's pretty simple. We found the height of the hill h, right? So the height of the hill CD is, as you can see here, 40 meters. And we also found the distance from the ship to the hill. That was 17.32 meters. So that's pretty easy, right? Now let's take a look at our last question. The angle of elevation of a plane from a point on the ground is 60 degree. After 10 seconds, the angle of elevation changes to 30 degree. The plane is flying horizontally at a constant height of 1500 root 3 meter. Find the speed of the plane. Friends, I am not going to be solving this question because I want you to try it yourself. And do let me know your answer by putting it in the comments below. I look forward to reading your comments. I hope the topic of heights and distances is crystal clear to you now. And remember the question on finding the speed of the aeroplane? Do let me know your answer by putting it in the comments below. And to practice more questions, you can try the quiz and the top three questions on this topic. I'll put the links in the description below. And do remember to like, comment and share out this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button right now. Also click on the notification bell to get notified about new videos. You can check my Facebook page and do check out my website manuchaacademy.com for more courses and videos. I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.